The team next up to receive the released Youth Academy treatment is Liverpool. After initially struggling this season in real life, the club could be shifting their attention to their Youth Academy for future ballers to scout. But today, Klopp's got other ideas and has chosen violence. In case you're new here, we basically take over clubs' Youth Academies, promote all their stars, and then release them into the free agency to see where their careers go from there. It's a fan-favourite channel staple series, so strap in. From promising wonder kids at a top club to being unemployed, life comes at you fast. In addition, this realism mod has gifted us with a larger than usual 16 player youth pool to work with. On the other hand, the Reds real life talents have piqued my interest and we'll be focusing on a mix of fictional and real players careers throughout the video. The youngsters we've chosen include the Scottish wonder kid Ben Doak, the English hot prospect Kite Gordon, the young Spaniard bursting onto the steam Stefan Bietic, the teenage French centre-back Billy Kumitio, and last but certainly not least, Harvey Elliott. And yes, we have to promote them from the academy first, otherwise if we release them from this hub, they will get deleted from the entire save, so we don't want that. We've actually placed them all on their own individual development plans to train and grow in the youth academy. We're going to simulate ahead maybe just a couple of months to experiment to see if this training can really help improve their game and better off their careers in the long run. This youth academy batch also includes in English homegrown talent so keep your eyes out for that. We've simulated exactly two months into the calendar and now it's time to take a look and meet and greet our Youth Academy bunch. Launching our academy with Ignacio Prieto the Venezuelan CDM slash centre back is 16 years of age, he's 6 foot 2. The left footer has a potential of 76 to 94. That's exactly what simming a bit further into the future has given us more accurate potential ranges. His technical department is absolutely in the gutter, 34 overall. He'll be the first player promoted to the senior team and it's yet another South American. This time it's Marcos Ortiz, the Paraguayan cam. He's versatile and can also play at center mid but with a high defensive work rate. I'm not quite sure how that works. He's five foot eight and has 80 to 94 potential already with a four star weak foot. 44 overall, which is only just a little bit better than that Venezuelan as we move on over to Nicolas Papa. And in the other Youth Academy releasing video, we had another Greek goalkeeper who was also named Papa Kletos, I believe. And the trend continues with these young goalkeepers having long passer and playmaker traits. But nevertheless, the Greek god is 6 foot 5 with a 74 to 90 potential as Fabio Wagner is our first European on the list. The 16 year old with the lowest potential range so far, 70 to 86. He's been operating on the wide back development plan, working on his defensive work rate. The left back can also play in the middle. And it's our second and final goalkeeper, the Austrian Timo Graf, who is 17 and has a potential of 71 to 87. He's another giant in between the sticks at 6 foot 5 and of course has the playmaker and outside the foot shot trait. Career mode, can there just be one day of the year where you actually make sense? As our next player up is Habib Al Rashidi, another wing back to add to the collection and he is from the United Arab Emirates with a potential of 74 to 92. These guys are starting from the bottom but the bright side is they have the future and time on their side. Just like this other wing back, Michael Warzinyak. The pole is 48 overall, can play at right back and right wing back. He also has three traits to boast about in his locker. He dives into tackles, he's got a second wind and he also has flare passes. He's pretty unique in that sense. He'll be promoted. It's the Colombian Carlos Cabrera. That poacher development plan has improved in plus one. He's a small forward, left footed with 78 to 94 potential and he has two traits in his arsenal with the finesse shot and tactical dribbler. That will come in handy and be useful once he gets out into the real world as Craig Quinn is going to be the left wing Irishman. Doesn't have the luck of the Irish here as he has one of the lowest potential ranges in the squad with 70 to 86 potential. Now we finally start to enter the 50s here with Fabio Martins. The Portuguese playmaker looks to be the most promising on the entire roster as he has an 82 to 94 potential, one of the highest potential ranges I've seen and a trait that actually benefits his game. He's got technical dribbler in his locker. I'm expecting this lad to have the biggest and brightest future. He has actually been downgraded to a 50 overall. I don't know what we've done wrong there, but hopefully the game can sort it out in season one. Next up on the clock is Bruce Coleman. The Canadian winger is 6 foot 4, has potential of 71 to 87, and actually has two traits in his backpack with flair and playmaker. However, his one major downside is that he's pretty lazy. Low attack and work rate, low defensive work rate. What does he even do? 
do. We'll see how being lazy affects the entirety of his career as next up on the plate is another defender, the center half that can also play at CDM, Farouk Al Mutayeri. The Arabic talent is coming through in this video as we've already had someone from the UAE with a potential of 79 to 94 to step up. And with power free kick and giant throw in being his specialties, he's also a team player. Up next, we actually have the lowest potential range out of the whole lot. It is a 65 to 81 potential for Dennis Colombo. The Belgian who sounds like he has Italian or Spanish descent has 75 crossing and that is his best attribute. Another one of these strikers who's 5 foot 7 and he can also play at centre forward. Not too many high hopes for the lad but I'm sure dynamic potential can do its thing as Jordan Evans is another one of these North American talents on our radar. He's made his way up through the academy at 16 years of age. He is 6 foot 5. An American behemoth at the back who is a solid player, has leadership qualities and also is equipped with the power header trait. He's Captain America himself, now standing out of 52. I got excited. I thought it was an Australian flag for a second, but coming through, it's New Zealand with Luca Proctor. The versatile winger has no traits, but can play on either side of the flanks at 17 years of age. He has a potential of 75 to 93. He's left-footed, four-star skill moves, and finally, last but not least, lucky last, it's the homegrown talent who should have Ballon d'Or potential, Oliver Tucker. He's the oldest player in this youth academy at 18 years of age. The Englishman can play pretty much anywhere on the right, came through already with a high attacking work rate, and he actually already has 93 agility, which is crazy. Four-star skill moves, working his way to five-star with that wide playmaker development plan. He's only 99 pounds. Can someone get this man in the gym, get his diet right? He's about to be bodied off the ball. Liverpool's academy has now turned into a barren wasteland, and it's now time for the releasing to commence. That's right, literally minutes after their promotion to the first team, we'll be releasing every single one of these talents onto the free agency. Some of them destined for greatness, some of them destined to fail. Who knows what wacky careers and storylines we'll be witnessing take place in this video, but that's what we're here for. We're strapping in for the ride. How are these youngsters going to react and bounce back from being released? From Anfield to free agents, I definitely feel more for the real life wonder kids because they've actually established a connection here with Jurgen Klopp. They're just innocent test subjects for our wacky experiments and I'm here for it. Here is our star-studded list of youth Academy talents will be tracking. We want a long-term simulation. I'm going 10 plus years, of course. We've got to make it to at least when they're in their peak, when they've entered their primes. They're free to join any club that shows interest in them, with players as low as Prieto at 34 overall, to youngsters upwards of 77 like Harvey Elliott. The diversity, the range, the variety in this roster is second to none. I'm so keen to see what's going to take place with these Academy ballers, so let's get simulating. We've breezed through season one, and now let's check in on the Youth Academy batch that we've got going on. And I'm already starting to see a few movers here. We've got Billy Kumitio. He is now at Servet FC. I don't know where they are. I don't know much about them, but that KFC sponsor definitely is in the good books for me. The Swiss outfit capture the defender, valued at 1.7 million pounds, and the biggest mover here is Harvey Elliott. He's packed his bags off to League Un to make a name for himself, and the Englishman has joined Lille on a free after he rejected Hertha Berlin for a swap deal. I didn't know approaching a free agent with a swap deal was even possible, but just like in World War II, the Germans failed. The ex-Liverpool sensation is now valued at £33 million, and it looks like most of the Liverpool OGs found a brand new home. It's another youngster who chose France as AC Ajaccio have picked up Stefan Bietic on a free. He rejected a loan move away to Angers, and he also rejected Tottenham in the process. The Spaniard actually wanted to win a few trophies in his career and he made a thousand IQ play. A positive start there, but for the rest of the list, it doesn't look too good. Pretty much every single youth academy player we called up have been languishing in the free agency besides our homegrown talent, Oliver Tucker. The youth prodigy has opted for a move abroad and has joined Salernitana in Serie A. This one's interesting though, as his market value stands at 25.5 million. They've actually implemented a release clause in his contract, 47.5 million pounds to capture the 18 year old and for the rest of them even including the Liverpool real life talents of Gordon and Doak who actually rejected a move to Hull City they'll be languishing in the free agency for at least one more season now let's dive into the season 2 progress these youngsters have made and it doesn't seem like too many changes are on the horizon we just have two new movements to report on here and the day has arrived these fictional stars have finally found a home and first cab off the rank is Carlos Cabrera he joins Arsenal de Serra 
Sandy over in Colombia, I believe. The 18-year-old striker's got a market value of 700k, and they've actually implemented a 2.35 million pound release clause in there. Signed, sealed, and delivered, just like Craig Quinn, who heads over to South America to Colo Colo. The Chilean outfit now captured the 60-rated Irishman, and he is now valued at 875k. It's not just the youth academy talents that are struggling, it's the real-life Liverpool wonder kids that can't find a club either. Cade Gordon and Ben Doak. They're out here going on two years of being free agents and now Oliver Tucker has an 86.7 million pound release clause. Cabrera and Quinn are leading the way so hopefully for the rest of the youth academy talents they can follow in their footsteps. And I didn't think checking on players individually or was on the cards for at least another five plus seasons but Harvey Elliott has actually made the Lille first team. He started in France week in week out for season two and here are some of his contributions to the club as he managed 50 appearances on the back of the net 18 times with 8 assists. He's a crucial first team member and is actually the only cam at the club so I can see him thriving here for years. Unfortunately Tucker at Salernitana has been relegated with La Granata. They're now in Serie B and the youngster managed 2 goals and 7 assists in 42 appearances, 9 goal contributions in the second tier. You'd expect just slightly more production from a player of his quality but it doesn't help that the AI is actually playing him out of position. We could be bear witness here to yet another classic hostage situation, which trust me is common theme. We had a few in the last video too. The major news that we have to break in season three is that the real life Wonder Kids have finally found a home after two seasons of inactivity. It is Ben Doak who has moved to Finland with HJK Helsinki. They grab the promising Scotsman on a free whose physicals are just in top tier world class shape. The 19 year old dons the blue and white with his high attack and work rate. He has now got a price tag of 19.5 million pounds. Meanwhile, his ex-teammate Kyde Gordon has actually managed to move to Barcelona. It looks like the financial struggles are hitting the camp new pretty hard as they've opted for the English free agent. As long as he's found the club, that's all that matters and they've actually installed a release clause. A 32.6 million pound price tag and his market value is currently standing at 14 mil. A surprising move there, but a welcomed one. Meanwhile, for our fictional youth talents, we have Farouk al Muteri, the Saudi Arabian centre-back who has joined Hankredi Um. Sport. This video is just providing me with the biggest pronunciation challenges, but I'm here to take them on. As the 20 year old who can also play at CDM is now valued at 1.6 million pounds and has found a home in Turkey. As for the lower tier, the bottom end of the pack, they have had no luck and are still eagerly awaiting some offers from the rest of the world. Some preconceived transfer news here. I've gotten the scoop and this has actually happened during the season. Lil have decided to sell Harvey Elliott to Borussia Dortmund. The Englishman is looking to apply his trade outside of the UK and is joining the Bundesliga Giants at the start of season 4. They agreed a fee for 68.8 million pounds. In retrospect, Tucker is still the best player by far here at the club. In 43 appearances, 13 goals and 20 assists, the goal scoring playmaker, double figures in both departments, is taking the Italian second tier by storm. Not the best result for the Terriers, but on an individual basis, he will be departing as the best player at the club with stats that mirror his first season, 50 appearances, 19 goals and 6 assists, 25 goal contributions as he leaves France in excellent form. The hostage situation is no more as we've had a gargantuan winter transfer offer come through here for Oliver Tucker. Even though despite him rupturing his ACL, Chelsea have activated that 86.7 million pound release clause and the young gun will be returning to the homeland, this time to Stamford Bridge. It's like he's done a reverse Mo Salah so he spent the first half of the season in Italy, then made his blockbuster return to the Premier League. On the other hand, we've had Harvey Elliott, who is now the highest rated player on this list. His first season in Germany. Stefan Bietic has been a loyal servant at a Jackie O. He's been in France for four years now, and Kyle Gordon does look like he's been transferred. However, the Blaugrana have loaned him out to Stade de Rems. Will still getting to deploy him out in Ligue 1, as Kumatio has had offers from both AC Milan and Tottenham, but just refused to leave or the club isn't willing to sell him. And the Belgian goal-getter Dennis Colombo has found a new home. He'll be playing his football in Serie B with Ternana. He's still important for the club with his 6.5 million pound price tag. And it's another academy prospect making the move to Italy. This time it's the Pole, Warzyniak. But also blew Itani services for free and he now has a market value of 1.3 million pounds. It's a modest campaign for Stefan Adedajakio as he helps them to salvation in Ligue 1. He's one of the
of the most important first team members at the club and he managed to get four goals and one assist from CDM. We venture to the Italian second tier again as Ternana had a humbling season finishing in 14th and it was their boy up top Colombo to score four goals in 39 appearances. The Belgian feeling a bit rusty after three years of being a free agent and is in bad form. And unfortunately for him, they don't play in a formation that utilizes attacking midfielders, which was a strange decision and therefore has led him to have a limited game time, being a super sub in off the bench with limited appearances. 33 games, three goals and two assists, so he's definitely not being utilized to his fullest potential. It hasn't been the picture perfect start for Tucker at Chelsea as he arrived at the club with a major injury. He's been injured for the majority of this season as he's had zero appearances, no involvement whatsoever. He's formed a lovely bond with the medical staff. That's something we can't control and something else we can't control is checking in on Ben Doak because I know a lot of you Scottish fans are going to be wondering. However, the Finnish league actually isn't in FIFA and Helsinki are currently in the rest of the world category, which is always a fun curveball FIFA likes to throw at us, but let's simulate further and continue to season five. Now, half a decade down the line, season five has arrived and we've still got these, you know, bottom tier stragglers struggling here in the lower end. That includes Captain America himself, Jordan Evans, Papa in between the sticks and Al Rashidi. They are still clubless, but we can't say the same for Bruce Coleman as the Canadian has found a home at Torino. Another one of these academy ballers finding a refuge in Serie A. The good news continues as the German Fabio Wagner has been picked up by Ol Olympic Lyon. One of the most promising academy players when we were first introduced to the batch was Fabio Martins and he gets given his flowers as FC Olsberg pick him up for free. His release clause has actually been instated for 13.5 million as he has a 4.5 million market value. From Colombia to the city of love, Carlos Cabrera has had a big money move to PSG and the Parisians have picked him up for an undisclosed fee. They see him as the future. The 21 year old could now potentially be linking up with Mbappe up top. The moves just don't stop. It has been a hectic summer as the Paraguayan attacking midfielder Marcos Ortiz has landed at the San Siro. The Rossoneri take a chance on him, valued at 5.5 million pounds. A player who started off at the 33 overall. He was the worst out of the bunch. The Venezuelan Ignacio Prieto has arrived at Red Bull Salzburg in Austria and he has probably one of the most consistent attribute sets I have seen so far. Not a red stat in sight besides interceptions. He's pretty well balanced and he's valued at 4.1 million. In other rumors and potential moves that could have taken place, we've had Bietic and he rejected a move to Ghent. He rejected a move to the Premier League. Leeds United offered him for him and he just couldn't agree a contract. After being dealt with a major injury step back, Oliver Tucker can now say he's a Premier League champion with Chelsea winning the title with 79 points. The Blues were also pretty close to winning the Europa League, losing out in an all-English final to Man City 2-0 because they play in a 5-2-3 formation and it's not Tucker's prime position. The assistant manager didn't really select him and he just came off the bench in light bursts with 21 appearances, two goals and two assists. Not the ideal return. However, we will be converting him into a right winger so he can overtake that spot and become the main man here at Stamford Bridge. Colombo had yet another stock standard season here at Ternana, narrowly missing out on the playoffs and I don't really know what's up with his game considering he's one of the best players, the best striker here at the club and he's bagging 39 appearances only netting two goals though so the Belgian is severely underperforming in bad form and is currently unhappy. I guess Kai Gordon can claim he is a Spanish champion here with Barcelona but what did he actually do? How much did he really contribute? He got no game time whatsoever. That is a waste of a season in my book. Bajatic is building a legacy for himself out of Jackie O. However, they have been relegated this year. It's been a disastrous campaign for him at the club and is it finally time to say goodbye? As a player of his quality at his level, can't be dropping down to the second tier as the Spaniard managed a goal and two assists in 39 appearances. Harvey Elliott continues to go trophyless here at Dortmund and his fiasco here at BVB continues to take twists and turns. It's typical, it's another one of these AI clubs not using the formation that Elliot is suited to and that has led to him getting 32 appearances in and off the bench with three goals and two assists, losing out to the likes of Kamara, Pellegrini in midfield, Bruno Fernandes and I'm happy to announce that Colombo has actually been starting for Belgium, the Red Devils using his services in up front as their main striker. We've missed the 2026 World Cup unfortunately but in the 2028 Euros we'll check 
check in as Harvey Elliott has earned his start in that England midfield three as we now only have five players who are yet to find a club six seasons deep as the likes of Jordan Evans, Nicholas Papa, Ar-Rashidi and Proctor are still free agents to this day. It also includes Craig Quinn who has been sent back to the streets after his club released him from his contract and the Irishman now out here struggling in the free agency. New moves to cover include while Rizniak, the pole at right back, has joined Hertha Berlin. That's now his second club. It's an undisclosed fee, but an 8.1 million pound release clause has been implemented. And the 6 foot 5 Austrian Timo Graf, the shot stopper, joins Nottingham Forest to be their third string keeper. Oliver Tucker, who he officially converted to a right winger, so he actually got some game time at Chelsea. Bayetic decided to stay loyal and apply that pressure in the second tier with a Jackie O, and he guided them back to promotion. If he decides to stay at the club, he'll be participating in the top tier again as he's the best player on the roster by a country mile. He put in a shift and got himself 39 appearances, 3 goals and 2 assists, 5 goal contributions for the Spaniard. It's unbelievable. Harvey Elliott has just been flat out disrespected here ever since he arrived at the Signal Aduna Park. They only managed to grab 3 goals and 3 assists in and off the bench and they're paying the price for it, continuing to lose out the league title, going trophy list here in this 3 season campaign. As they finish rock bottom this season, for some reason, they're playing Colombo out at right wing. It's just major L's everywhere you look. Bad decisions on everyone's part, and he only managed to score four goals in this terrible side with 42 appearances. Chelsea and Tucker came awfully close to backing up their Premier League title and defending it. However, they got too many draws at the end of the day and lost out the title to Man City. Take a look at this front three. Rodrigo, Havertz, and Tucker leading the line. It's a formidable trident. However, Rodrigo stole the main limelight and got the majority of the goals, 32 and 13 assists. Meanwhile, Oli Tucker has to be grateful because he did get the minutes, 56 appearances, 12 goals and 9 assists from the right-hand side. Fair play to the lad because he's nearly cracked that 100 million pound mark. And the event of Euro 2028, hear it how it's unfolded. Over in Group B, it is Scotland and Ben Doak to progress out of that one, finishing top alongside Bietic's Spain. The big major shock here is that England, a five-star three Lions, have finished bottom with Tucker and Elliott in their ranks. They only managed two draws. All our horses were eliminated early, including Doak Scotland, who lost out in the quarters 2-0 to France. Going all the way, it was Croatia to beat Germany in the final 3-1. It was just a complete disaster class from this England team. A shit show, if you will. Tucker got two appearances. Elliott also managed two appearances. The whole team only scored two goals all tournament. However, Ben Doak, of all players, managed two appearances in off the bench and got himself an assist. And it's disappointing to see, but Colombo's Belgium didn't even qualify for the Euros. So we're going to have to have tunnel vision for the 2030 World Cup in two seasons time. Lucky season seven has dawned upon us and we have some chaos that has ensued because Barcelona have let go of Cade Gordon. He's back on the streets. He's back to being a free agent. Nicolas Papa, the Greek god in between the sticks. He'll be joining Real Betis, now valued at 1.7 million pounds as Jordan Evans gets his first major start at a professional club and he joins Inter. He's got all the traits and personality archetypes to be successful at the Sun Seattle. And a move I wasn't expecting at all. It is the UAE left back linking up with Tucker at Chelsea and he becomes a brand new blue with a transfer market value of 2.2 mil. We've had the Saudi Arabian center back who's been playing his ball out in Turkey for a while now. He actually rejected a move to Milan as the Belgian baller Colombo was actually released from Ternana. He went back to being a free agent again but Union of Berlin have picked him up in the Bundesliga. First it was Leeds, now it's Schalke. He's rejected a move to both. He just loves life in Finland right now. And I'm really intrigued with the development of these four. Prieto, Ortiz, Cabrera and Martins. They just give me the feeling that they're bubbling under the surfaces. Their careers could be exploding anytime soon. You guys got to get your prayers up for these three. Trust me, there is still time and hope to turn things around. Colombo at Union Berlin and it looks like they're struggling in the Bundesliga. Not exactly pushing for European places. The Belgian is in hot contention with eight other strikers, which is just crazy. The CPU AI are just uh, absolutely nonsensical sometimes, but he managed eight appearances and got himself five goals when he was on. I don't think it's time to hit the panic buttons yet. He'll be hoping to guide not only his club, but country up the ranks. Keeping the theme in Germany, whilst we're here, we'll check in on Harvey Elliott. And they haven't really gotten the best out of the Englishman in his, like, what, five seasons here at the club? He's been one of their best players outfield, and he's still only managing two 
two goals in three assists in 49 appearances, and the majority of those are in and off the bench, despite their only 20 squad size. He isn't thriving whatsoever and doesn't even compete and rank in the top performers at the club. Havertz, Rodrigo, and Tucker that still only managed to get Chelsea a top four finish with 77 points. The ex Liverpool youth's numbers this season were far from impressive as he only managed 15 goals and seven assists for a player of his quality, nearly considered one of the world's best. 22 goal contributions is decent production, but you'd expect a little bit more as he's the lowest performing player out of the front three, now reaching a 102 million pound price tag. Man, this move couldn't have come soon enough. I've just realized that Ben Doak has signed a pre-contract agreement with a club and he'll be joining Newcastle United when the summer transfer window opens. And it's been a long time coming. That's a major update as the Saudi Arabian Investment Fund have taken a keen interest in the exciting Scotsman. What could he conjure up at St. James's Park in season eight? We've got some summer spending to cover here in season eight as Billy the Kid has finally moved and he's returning back to the Premier League for 30 million pounds. Aston Villa acquire his services and unfortunately for him, no more free KFC. And we have Bietic. He'll depart Ajaccio as he leaves the long-serving French side for Valencia, 82.1 million pounds. On the free agents front, Frosinone, my boys, come through and save Craig Quinn from his free agent misery. The Irish has found a new home in the second tier of Italian football. Now we've come to the conclusion of season eight and we are in the deep stretch here. We are playing the long game and the simulation is coming through with results. However, the one and only free agent now is the Kiwi Luca Proctor. He's a lone ranger out here on these streets, eight years without kicking a ball. It's truly frustrating to see his career flushed down the drains. We have a new move to report on for the Polish right wing back, Wozniak. He's got that dog in him and he somehow finessed the move to Real Madrid. Now he's valued at six million pounds. The German left back Wagner has also moved to Spain, this time signing for Celta Vigo. Can I just give some props to this guy, Ignacio Prieto. He started off at 33 overall. He was the worst player by far and he's made it through the mud with some of the most consistent stats you'll ever see. And it's a massive free agent move here for Cade Gordon, another ex-Liverpool Academy player in real life, returning to the Prem and this time he has chosen Tottenham. Okay, so he's chosen a career of winning no trophies. That's fine by me as long as the kid gets game time. His market value is up at 51.5 mil. No one is yet to break into the 90s overall range. Believe it or not, we're eight years deep and it's the first time we've checked in on Doak. Arrived in the Premier League and guided Newcastle up to a 12th place finish. His performances and output this year made him one of the best goal scorers at the club. Tied with Opender on goals, 13 goals and three assists for the Scottish. He grabbed 35 appearances with an average match rating of 6.83, 16 goal contributions, and it's a great way to start life in England. Bajatic has returned to the homeland to play his football, and he's gone from one relegation battle to the next. He was in a proper relegation scrap with Valencia. He hasn't even featured in the starting 11 for the club, which is already a worrying sign. The CPU AI definitely need an overhaul for FIFA 24, but the best player on the club, on the roster, he's 25 and only got himself 22 appearances and two goals. I don't know why they bought out 80 plus million just to have him sitting on the bench. Marco Ortiz at Milan is currently struggling to get into the starting 11 as Tom Bishkoff is the best attacking midfielder at the club. The Paraguayan actually is joining Brentford in the summer. So there's a transfer we missed. A little pre-contract agreement for the South American as he only managed to get three appearances for Rossoneri this campaign. He's going to be Gordon as he did move over to Spurs and claim them a top four spot, getting them Champions League qualification. Considering in this Spurs starting 11 is all over the place. He's not even starting. I can see the red flags waving like crazy already. Pretty far down the pecking order, but oh my goodness me, that is one of the best performances and production I have seen from one of these released Youth Academy players. He's back and he's returned with a vengeance with 39 goals and 8 assists in all competitions. 47 goal contributions in 52 appearances is just absolutely world class. Miraculous. He definitely should be first name on the team sheet week in week out. Now, of course, PSG took home the French League title over here in Ligue 1, but did Cabrera manage to break through the starting 11? Fair few strikers he has to compete with. He's a rotational player. There he goes. Finally, time to claim some spot in the limelight. He outscored Mbappe, believe it or not. In 42 appearances, managed double figures in both departments. The only player at the club to achieve that with 20 goals and 10 assists. The Colombian national team should be calling him, but unfortunately, they're not in FIFA. Now we venture over to the Bundesliga, where Dortmund have had a flop of a campaign. They've come through
Gunther in ninth, and it's Colombo's Union Berlin almost facing relegation. When it comes to Harvey, of course, he's been caught up to the national team for the World Cup, but his performances at club level this season were more than disappointing. It is just flat out disrespect why they don't play him. In his prime at 27 in eight appearances off the bench, got himself one assist. Yeah, nothing much to really report on here. Now, the combination of Mbolo and Colombo up top nearly cooked up a relegation disaster class, but did the Belgian manage to even make the best out of a bad season? It was the third highest goal scorer in probably one of their worst campaigns to date. Eight goals and three assists for the Belgian frontman in 36 appearances. Considering Villa are a top half team in this simulation, they actually have some world class centre backs at their disposal. Though, unfortunately, Billy the Kid didn't get much of a look in. However, the 27 year old managed to go in his debut season with 31 appearances in and off the bench. He's a great utility, a quality backup that shouldn't be underestimated. Now, Tucker has been Chelsea through and through for the past few years now. It was a pretty run of the mill campaign for them in the league, but over in the Champions League, they made it all the way to the big dance, beating out Barcelona on penalties 5 4. Our first released youth academy product to become a Champions League winner. We'll be representing England on the international scene. A pivotal member of that front three attacking Trident. And again, he was the least productive out of the three. He's still considered world class though on the right hand side with an average match rating of 7.08 in 59 appearances as Rodrigo and Havertz continue to outdo him at his own game. He could well and truly be our only hope for a Ballon d'Or winner in this video. Now we're actually in with a chance for one of our Academy Wonder kids to go ahead and win the World Cup. We've got a few represented in here. I can confirm a lot of the players we're tracking have been caught up for the tournament. However, they actually don't show on the team sheets like Bietic for Spain. And the only player that does show is Proctor, the man who's been a free agent this entire time. He gets a starting spot in the New Zealand first team. From zero to hero, baby. Now he's at the 2030 World Cup. The World Cup results are here as Proctor's New Zealand finish bottom of Group A. We had Ireland come through out of Group B. United States knocked out. Italy finished on top. England just managed to scrape through second here in Group C. And Doak Scotland finishing rock bottom. France also finishing rock bottom, which was a major surprise. As Spain make it out of Group G. And Belgium finished third. Can't progress to the round of 16. And that's what you get for not starting Colombo up top. We had Spain take care of business against Brazil 2-0. And England breeze past Ghana 3-0. But yet it just Spain were knocked out to Germany. And England won on penalties against Italy. To see themselves through to the semi-finals where they completely demolished Hungary. And that set up a Germany. England World Cup final and in 2030 the three Lions take it home. It was a 1-0 hard fought win for Gareth Southgate and the boys. We'll let the stats speak for themselves as they really didn't play much of a part. They got the World Champions medal at the end of the day but five appearances for Elliot in and off the bench I assume with no goal contributions and Tucker only had one appearance to his name but hey at least they were part of the squad. The character growth here for Luca Proctor is just absolutely insane. It's inspirational. Nearly a whole decade of being a free agent and on the world stage he scored a goal in three appearances for New Zealand. Quinn also managed to bag an appearance for Ireland off the bench and Doak with the same fate, the best player in the whole nation but only got himself one appearance. Colombo didn't start but his impact off the bench as a super sub was felt as he managed to get himself two games and one goal. After setting my expectations extremely low, I mean the bar was in hell, we've got a 2030 Ballon d'Or nomination for Tucker. I feel like I just manifested this one because he's nominated up alongside his teammate Rodrigo and then of course the two inevitable monsters of Erling Haaland and Mbappe. Nonetheless it's cool to see a nomination as Erling Haaland will take home the golden ball. Unfortunately for either of the Chelsea boys they won't get that Ballon d'Or fame. In one of the top three deals of the summer we have a major money move a nine figure ballpark for Dennis Colombo as he departs the struggling Union Berlin as Athletic Bilbao poached the 25 year old services, they break their transfer policy. The Basque-only players will be joined by the world-class Belgian. January purchase from Standard Liège as they spent £62.7 million pounds on Ignacio Prieto. A couple of minor transfers like Habib Al Rashidi, he moved from Chelsea to Egger Glass Hartberg. I believe they're an Austrian outfit and one thing I can say with confidence is that they've got way too many sponsors. Like, what on earth is that jersey? It looks like you're reading a bloody Bible passage, not a sponsor. And there are three guarantees in life, death, 
Taxes and Luca Proctor being a free agent. The Kiwi International is still unfortunately without a club. Fabio Martins has had a 127.9 million pound release clause installed in his contract. Salombo has skyrocketed into the top three, surpassing Harvey Elliott as now his release clause stands at 230.5 million. And Oli Tucker still remains on top of the pile at Chelsea with an 89 rating. After he won the World Cup with his nation, the world champion was unable to do the same here in the Bundesliga as Dortmund came through in fourth but it looks like he actually might have got some decent game time this season being the best rated outfield player on the roster. He's in bad form, he's unhappy but he still managed two goals and five assists in 35 appearances. You gotta think, the boy's probably low on confidence after years of being ignored. He attempted to be that Bellingham-esque figure for the club. The quicker he gets out of Dortmund the better. And there you go, he's one of the top three best ballers at the club. He's a crucial first team player. 45 appearances, 10 goals and 4 assists for the South American. He's a goal scoring cam. We venture over to Spain as Colombo managed a 6th place finish for Athletic Bilbao. He was a starting striker in up top. He's the best player at the club by a country mile. You know what? I, I just forget about it. I can't be bothered right now. That is just criminal. We shift our attention towards a striker who did get some game time and obviously with PSG won the league quite comfortably. It's El Pistolero Cabrera up front with Mbappe. Surely they were able to set their house on fire, but no, it was a more than lackluster season because somehow Andre Silva is still going strong. Six goals and four assists in 17 appearances. You just never know what you're going to get when you check in with these teams. Like, what kind of craziness and chaos are we going to be greeted with? I swear, every day without fail, Karimo continues to stir further away from the path, further away from God, from relegation battle to qualifying for the Champions League. However, with an 89 overall, he's unhappy with his playtime. The best player player at the club is only getting 22 appearances, 4 goals and 2 assists. 6 goal contributions coming in off the bench for a defensive midfielder is actually pretty impressive, but he's been getting done dirty. Unfortunately, he's not in their starting 11, which, yeah, doesn't fill me with confidence. And again, who is letting these managers cook? Because a crucial first team player, by no means, should be only playing 8 games with 1 goal in off the bench. I don't know what we have to do. In one of the more wholesome, unexpected stories of the season is that Kumatio has somehow merged his way into the first team Villa starting lineup. They sold one of their main centre halves and he joins alongside fellow countryman Kanate at the back, getting himself 48 appearances and two goals to his name. Who knew that Billy the Kid had this in him and would impress us the most this season? Clyde Gordon, ever since arriving at Spurs, has excelled and he's brought them to a third place finish, top four for Tottenham, and he seems to be a first choice starter. They're actually implementing him at striker in this 5 2 3 formation. 57 appearances, 30 goals and 15 assists. Monumental numbers. This production is second to none. They have this man to thank for their successes. 45 goal contributions. And may the story continue. What an absolute phenomenon. He needs to be taken home, the 2031 Ballon d'Or. We're catching up with Tucker and friends at Chelsea as the Blues have come through in fourth spot behind Spurs. You can bet your bottom dollar he was one of the best performers. Actually, the third best, of course. He's the least impressive out of the three, getting out shunned by the German and Brazilian. Nevertheless, with 27 goal contributions in 57 appearances, it's still something to be proud of. Unfortunately, we've got no nominees in the Ballon d'Or contention. We all know Kai Gordon should probably be up there, and who knows what happened with Tucker and Rodrigo. Maybe that was just a one-season wonder. Massive news hitting the airwaves here over in the summer as this deal got over the line. Valencia selling a budgetic, and thank God, because they weren't really using him whatsoever. So let's hope United, after splashing 118.5 million pounds. Get the best out of the Spaniard who can't even find his way in the Spanish national team. The disrespect for this king is just off the charts. Now Aston Villa have hit the self-destruct button, literally selling half their starters, some of their best players on the roster, and that includes Billy the Kid. He's been sold off to Olympic Lyon, who will be departing to France for a fair 38.4 million pounds. We have hit the decade mark. It's a milestone campaign in the simulation not only for the year, but it's also the time where Luca Proctor has been picked up by a team and it's only taken 10 years. But Independiente Petrolero have acquired the Kiwi. It's a real story of patience and persistence. You've got to love it as Al Rashidi was actually out in a loan spell in Austria, but he is available to negotiate for a pre-contract just as Timo Graf is as he was actually released by Nottingham Forest. I'm still surprised with the Saudi Al Muteri as he's just stuck by his team 
in Turkey. A transfer that didn't appear in our main feed was Fabio Martins. Olsberg sold him off to PSV and he'll be playing his football in the Eredivisie. Billy the Kid actually had a fair few offers come through from Clermont Foot and Monaco, but he ended up choosing Leon. Cabrera drew a lot of interest from Spain. The likes of Getafe and Raul Batiste offered for his services, but he rejected them both. And Kai Gordon has pushed himself into the top six conversation. His performances and output have been second to none. Stefan grew his game at Anfield and now he is executing it in his prime at Old Trafford. He is the top three, one of the best players in the team. As a crucial first team player, managed 48 appearances, eight goals and one assist, so more than he was getting at Valencia. PSG won the league untitled quite comfortably and finally Cabrera and Mbappe got to cook together as a strike duo up front. He only found the back of the net, no assist for the man up front. In 52 appearances, that is one of the most impressive years the Colombian has had at the City of Love. Bilbao, I've given you a second chance. Please don't fumble the bag here with Colombo. And again, it looks like he has played second fiddle to that striker in Cuanquo. What's so good about him? Why does he get the start over a Colombo? It just doesn't make sense. And he's happy to sit on the bench and claim his 67k a week. At least he got caught up for Belgium, though. Unfortunately, BVP still trophyless after countless years at the club. Now classified as one of the world's best, but doesn't qualify him to get regular game time at Dortmund. Nine goals and one assist, and I feel like I'm just watching his career flash before his eyes. He's been a wasted talent here, and Dortmund just refused to sell him. That's the beauty of these career simulations, where the major, you know, decisions are out of our hands. It's just completely unpredictable, like Brentford. The Bees are playing with fire towards the bottom end of the Premier League table, coming through in 16th. And Ortiz, despite getting regular game time, he's actually been played out of position. He's 26, about to enter his prime, and in 43 appearances, backed himself four goals. He's in a pretty piss poor Brentford side, so you gotta forgive him, and his best years might still be ahead of him. Come on, Gordon, you know how to cheer me up. Renew my faith in career mode, as Spurs had a pretty ordinary season, finishing in eighth. Being forced to play at striker, he gets slapped with a minus five downgrade. But how did that affect his performances this season? Was he still the main man, and you can bet your bottom dollar he was, was by far the best player here in North London White. With 29 goal contributions, getting a plus three boost to an 88, he is flirting with a world-class status. Shock horror, Newcastle might have actually taken our advice as a newly converted left wing doke has pushed the Magpies into a third place spot. And the lineup is starting to resemble something of a football team. Who knew that playing this kid every game would get them results? 46 appearances, 26 goals and nine assists. My faith has been renewed in the black and white army. He has got to be a fan favorite at St. James's Park. There is no doubt. And he came through as a crucial first team player, one of the world's best with that 92 rating. He is now the second best out of the trio. Yet to accomplish double figures in both departments, but a goal scoring winger with 25 goals and five assists in 57 appearances. And still, after all these years, only weighs in at 99 pounds. The English couldn't win two major international tournaments in a row. And in 2032, the European champions of Spain, Bayetic coming through with a 2-0 win in the final. 20 years after 2012, they come through and take home yet another European title. England were eliminated by bitter arch rivals Germany and they got their revenge after the 2030 World Cup final. There's your proof of the matter. Bietic is actually a main protagonist in this Spain Euros Cup run. He was called up and actually started in that immaculate midfield. On the bright side though for country, Colombo was actually getting recognised and earned back his starting spot up front for Belgium. And they weren't involved whatsoever but I've just noticed that Captain America, Mr. Evans himself, gets the captain's armband and starts for the United States. His job isn't to score goals really, he's just there to be a midfield presence. And Stefan came through with five appearances in his prime as Colombo actually struck gold and hit three goals in this competition, four appearances. Tucker off the bench managed five appearances and two goals. Meanwhile, it was Harvey Elliott getting himself four appearances. As over the summer, Jordan Evans made his move to River Plate. I think he signed a pre-contract agreement for the Argentinian champions as he now plays his football in South America. Let's have havoc. I want a final simulation, a final season of the video. I want this to be a roller coaster ride finale in 2033. Would you look at that? Oli Tucker coming through. History has repeated itself and in 2032, the homegrown talent has been nominated for the golden ball. Can he snatch it off either Haaland or Mbappe? Is it going to be another daylight robbery or will Haaland take it again? And of course he does. The Norwegian Viking is just inevitable.
Heartbreaking stuff as the Academy talent has to concede defeat again. Here are the players still in the headlines for season 11's transfer window and it's two of our boys in a row. We've got Prieto, the Venezuelan being purchased by Spurs for 99.2 million pounds. They capture him from Belgium as it's Colombo making his well-deserved move to Milan. The Rossoneri spending 98.4 million pounds. With the rest of the list, we had Timo Graf actually join a club. The Lernitana pick him up from the free agency as the Austrian provides a decent second choice option. Better luck next time for the UAE left back as he is left stranded as the only player to be a free agent come the end of this sim. And Faruk stayed loyal to the first team that ever gave him a chance, the Turkish outfit Umrenia Spore. And the homegrown talent claims his spot on top as the best player. Being nominated twice for the golden ball, however, he will unfortunately forever remain in the shadows of both Rodrigo and Kai Havertz. He was a big fish in an even bigger pond, but his Chelsea career was rather successful. 63 appearances, 30 goal contributions, 21 goals and 9 assists for the right winger. Got to represent his nation, won the Champions League, won the Premier League. He's arguably the most complete career we've taken track of. Killing two birds with one stone here at Spurs as they continue to slide further down the table. But did Prieto and Gordon get their deserved game time? As of course, Kate Gordon actually had probably his worst season to date. The whole team were underperforming with 20 goal contributions, 12 goals and 8 assists in terms of production. And Prieto had limited game time, filling in here and there, coming in off the bench with 3 goals and 2 assists in 12 games. Now that brings us up to Brentford, who have completely skyrocketed up the table into 5th. He was disappointed in himself with his player performance, and I'm sure he holds himself to a high standard. 41 appearances, and he managed 11 goals and 2 assists. 13 goal contributions for the Paraguayan. Was there anything notable from Benny Boy? And okay, he's come through in these past few seasons, redeeming himself at Newcastle, hitting his prime at 27, and there you go, 27 goals and 11 assists in 53 appearances. The Magpies have found their new prodigal son. United had a European champion in their ranks and came through runners-up in the Premier League. But based on first glance, that's hard to believe until you dive deeper into the squad hub, peel back the layers, and the Spanish deep line playmaker got involved with 53 games, 11 goals and 3 assists from deep in midfield. It'd be rude of us not to really touch base with Colombo at AC Milan. They're operating in this quite unorthodox 3-4-2-1 formation. They have one of the best squads in Europe on paper. There is an abundant world-class competition here at Stryker with the likes of Jonathan David, Oshiman, the list goes on and on. He's unhappy with his playtime, so you already know he has been left out of the first team. Honestly, this man has had a career stolen from him thanks to poor management. Why do they need to have like 10 strikers on the books? A lot of these results were out of our control and that's just what makes it extra entertaining. Cabrera, the French champion, how did he fare with Mbappe up front? Did he get more than 25 goals? And no, he actually focused on his assist game this time around. The Colombian with double figures in both goals and assists. 26 goal contribution, 16 goals, 10 assists in 52 appearances. He delved more into his playmaking bag this campaign and it shows. You thought the drama was over. No, the transfer window never stops as Billy the Kid continues his worldwide tour across Europe and he joins Fiorentina for 29.9 million pounds. But here is your final look at the batch we have tracked. All the careers that have taken place. It's been a record 21 players we've been viewing in this transfer hub and I've enjoyed every single minute of tracking their journeys. The ups, the downs, the highlights and the lowlights. It was all there. We covered it best we could. We've had to deal with dodgy and criminal CPU AI decisions in career mode and we've just had to cop it on the chin. Again, let me know down in the comments below who is next. What club should deserve this academy treatment? Where will we take the series next? It's up to you guys in the comments below. What other additions could we make to, you know, make the series better? I'm open to suggestions so let me know. I read all the comments anyway. If you've made it this far, make sure to drop a like on the video below. These videos take ages to make. It's such a lengthy process. But you guys seem to eat it up and enjoy them. So I'll keep them coming if you show this video some love. Make sure to subscribe and turn on the bell so you never miss out on any content coming to the channel. Of course, I've been Sir BCHD. I'm gonna love you and leave you. Have a great day and I'll catch you all in the very next video.